Hello, hello, hello. Hello, eyes. Crazy. I'm gonna start the foolery now. Hello. Hey, Miss Lady. What's going on? Happy Self Care Friday. Not only is it Self Care Friday, it is Self Care Month. Come on, Jesus. Happy Self Care Month. Listen, I want to jump right on in. I do not want to hold up this live longer than I have to because the way the, the net be working. Um, mm -mm. So, welcome. Welcome, ladies. My name is Coach T. I am a mental health wife coach and marriage consultant. I coach wives, I coach wives who are going through a marital hardship or marital separation. Most of the wives I coach are going through some type of hardship that includes adultery, addiction, abandonment, mental and emotional distress. These wives, these wives have biblical reasons, have biblical reasons to leave or exit out of this marriage, but for some reason or not they feel a tug they feel a impression they feel a pull they have gotten instructions divine instructions they have gotten a divine download where they feel like god has told them hey i don't want you to leave this marriage i want you to stay right there where you are and i am going to do something in this marriage and so these are the ways that I help. I teach them how to confront their grief, their grief, their marital injury, whatever that marital injury may be. And then I help them to transform into a healthier version of themselves by walking through uh, the necessary steps that's needed um, to live a healthier lifestyle while they're trusting God in their marriage. So welcome, welcome, welcome. That was a little drawn out today. It was a little drawn out sometimes I rush through it and I don't really get to explain the details of it. So I showed up in my old lady dress, you know, today. I showed up in my old lady dress, my, my old lady attire today because I'm feeling like after this, I'm going to lay it on down. Um, so I wanted to get comfortable. <laughs> I wanted to be comfortable in my, in my, in my attire. What y'all got going on this month? What y'all got going on? Um, this self-care month, this self-care month, are y'all doing anything? Are y'all, you know, going anywhere? Have y'all made some plans? I know we just celebrated, you know, Labor Day. A lot of us was off, but it really wasn't off, you know, how that goes. Um, but how are you balancing out this new month? You know, how are you, how are you balancing yourself? Are you doing something for yourself? I want to make sure this month, if I don't share any other month, I want to make sure that I emphasize the importance of wives prioritizing themselves. Wives making sure that they get the necessary self-care that they need during this time. Like September is that month where it's like, it can go either way. <laughs> we can either go back to how these last, you know, uh, eight months have been or... We can start off new, okay? We we can we can start off new. So September is like that month where it's like you gotta make a decision, okay? You at a you at a crossroads and you gotta make a decision. Either we gonna go back to how things was August on on down to January, or we're going to switch it up a little bit, okay? And we're going to turn things around and do something. And I think that's probably they made September the self care month, like. This is your month to make a decision. This is your month to do something different. This is your month to really say, all right, am I going to start? Am I going to finish like I started? 
Or am I going to finish strong and do what it is that God has been telling me, you know, shaking me up, waking me up in the middle of the night, telling me that I need to do certain things. This is the time. This is the season. This is the month to do that. And so you have a decision to make, wife. You have a decision to make. And I want to come on and encourage you today to make that decision. All right. So listen, y'all know I had shared with y'all. Y'all know I had shared with y'all. I think it was last month or maybe the end of July. It was last month, beginning of last month, before we did the marriage restoration, um, before we did the marriage restoration event, um, I wanted to, uh, I, I shared with you guys that I wanted to do a series on King Her, King Her. And um, I was kind of playing with that title a little bit. Like, I'm like, do I really want to, you know, use that as a title? Uh, you know, do I really want to do this as a series? Like, you know, I was starting to feel all kind of different ways about it, all right? And so um, I wanted to title that because I wanted to discuss King David. I wanted to discuss King David and all of the adversity that King David went through, right? He went through so much. Um, and so I wanted to title it King Her um, so we can discuss King David and what it took for King David to become the king. If you guys have been following me for any amount of time, you know a couple of years back I did a series on, um, I can't remember what it was. I don't know if it was faith, a faith series or something, but we talked about it and we walked through, uh, the first book of Samuel with David and, you know, how he was anointed King and, you know, uh, the different things that, you know, he went through with his brothers and how the people was like, not even going to choose him. Like they had him, you know, put him out in the backyard with the sheep. They, you know, they counted him out and, um, we talked about that. We talked about that, but I can't remember what series that was up underneath of right now. I, I don't remember, but it was underneath one of them. Okay, y'all have to just go back to some of Coach T videos. Um, and so I remember then. I remember then God was telling me that we was gonna go back. We was gonna come. Back, we was gonna come back to um, David's story, and we was going to talk about him in a king way. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get all the way into those things um, tonight. Tonight, I wanted to come on. Um, on this Friday evening and just remind you that wife there is a king in you it was a son called that I think it was um what was his name Donnie I can't remember his name but he talked about it's a king in you and wife there is a king in you all right there is a king in you David David was anointed king um 15 years 15 years prior to him actually sitting in that king's seat prior as his role of actually operating as king he was already anointed king but it took 15 years for him to get to the kingdom and to get to do the job as a king all right and this was something that i was like i wonder why i wonder why so as I was doing some of my studying and doing a little research and doing a little reading and stuff I'm like let me just kind of like see you know what was going on with David during this time? Why, um, you know, we was going through these, you know, he it took so long for him to get to this place and, you know, why God allowed these things to happen. So the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms is loaded. It is loaded with all the different emotions that David experienced. Now, the book of Psalms is one of my favorite books of the Bible. In my curriculum, when coaching my wife clients, if I don't, reference any other bible book i am going to reference psalms and i tell my wife a psalms a day keeps the mind from going astray <laughs> a psalms a day keeps the mind from going astray and so i absolutely love the book of psalms and i love it so much because it's real <laughs> it's, it's it's real it gives you the highs and the lows it gives you you know the ups and the downs it gives you you know you can be in a, a praise and worship place but then at the same time you you know coming for you know the the the, the fire and you and you pleading the blood and it is it, it gives you all these different ups and downs and one of the things that i must most love about it is the transparency of it right and so it's loaded. It's loaded with different emotions that David had experienced. And um, it constantly, it constantly talks about um the, the the life that David, you know, pretty much lived, the things that he that he had to go through, him running for his life, him fighting different battles, him being a leader. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> 
and a man of God, him being a, you know, a, a man of God, he had to endure some hard stuff, right? He had to endure some hard stuff. And again, again, I was stung with, why? <laughs> why, God? Like, why Why this man had to go through all this stuff that he went through if he was already anointed? If you had already chose him for the job? If you already had to gave him the plan? You had already, you know, told him what the results was going to be, the end results was going to be? Why did this man have to go through so much? And so the questions that I wrote down was like, why so long? <laughs> why so? Why so much, God? Why, why so many challenges? Why, why he had so many enemies? Like these people hated this man. Why he had so many haters? Why so many naysayers? Why so much rejection? Why so many lost relationships? Why, why was they coming for this man net like that? Like he, like, like they were. Why was it so much? Why did David have to go through so much? And doing my research, of course, and, you know, a lot of us already know the story of David and, you know, how God, you know, turned things around in his life and, then, you know, different things that he went through once he became king. But I did do some research. And one of the words that kept coming up as I was researching on David was the word character, character, character. God was testing David. He was pruning David. He was refining David. <laughs> he was developing David. He was maturing David. And he was perfecting David's character. Huh? Me. Let me tell you. <laughs> if one thing, if one thing that I know to be true about character is that it can keep you in places, rooms, give you favor with certain people, and endure the hardest things in life. Character is one of those, I call it superpower. I, you know, I, that's the word I use. It's, it's, one of your, it's one of your superpowers. I will include character as being one of your superpowers that you cannot afford not to have. <laughs> you, you just cannot afford not to have. And one of the things I share with my wife clients all the time is if God has called you to this type of assignment to stay in a marriage relationship that you have biblical reasons to walk away from, you're going to have to have some type of character. <laughs> and you're going to have to have some kind of character, some type of character, because they're going to walk you out of your character, okay? And so because they're going to walk you out of your character, you got to know how to regain yourself right you got to know how to bring how to bring yourself back you cannot be on this type of assignment and god does not take you through the loops the training of character and though david and though david made a lot of mistakes because he did and he did some horrible things and did he responded in some violent ways he surely did one thing we know for sure is that David had a heart that was aligned with God's. David had a heart that was aligned with God. The Bible says David was a man at the God's own heart. If you go back and read 1 Samuel 13, 14, 13, 14, and then Acts 13, 22. David was a man at the God's own heart and that he was committed to God's ways and demonstrated God's law. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite stories of David. And I always say this is one of my favorites because I always talk about, you know, the character Abigail in the Bible. Because Abigail has been my life story. <laughs> it seems like not even as a married woman, but even as a younger girl. And I love how David, I love how David uh, recruited his men to go and talk to Nabal, right? If you go back, I think it's in 1 Samuel 24. Five, don't quote me on that. Um, but he he talks about, you know, he 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 get his man up, he goes like, you know, listen, go tell this dude, okay? <laughs> because we done been out here, all right. We we done, we done been out here. So go tell him that, you know, 
if he can show any kindness, you know, to to us, you know, we've been out here, we've been watching his men, you know, we making sure that nobody, nothing don't happen to them. If there's anything that he can spare, like some food, something for us to just, you know, get through, we will greatly appreciate that, right? We, we will greatly appreciate that. And I'm and I'm paraphrasing it, y'all. Um, and so the man go, they 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 go to you know to to the house and Nabel he 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 big he big angry he big grumpy he he all kinds of extra just 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 mean for no reason mean, and he was able to do the things that they was requiring or that they were requesting, but because of his 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 power that he had and he was and he was able to make those kind of decisions, he didn't do it. So he, who, who, who is this David man? Who, 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 who is this, this Jesse? I don't know. I don't know who this is. People around here these days, they running from their slave, they, they, uh, from their slave master. They, they leaving places. I don't know. I ain't doing none of that. Right. I, I ain't doing none of that. And so the man was like, okay, all right, all right, sir. Cool. We got it. We got the message. And so they go back and they report to David. <laughs> they go back and report to David. And David was like, say what? <laughs> sir, who? He said, what? And so they was like, you know what? That's it. Load up. We've been, we've been to go. We've been to take this whole man household out. He not gonna do what? Do he know who I am? Okay, get your stuff. Get your, get your, get your stuff in order. We've been to go, and we've been to take his whole house out. Now, in the meantime, while David is getting, you know, up in his in his emotions and his feelings because this man didn't really, really try him because David's like, we didn't have to do this. We just did this at the kindness of our heart, sir. And you going you can't even spare us a little bit of bread. So one of Nabal and Abigail's servants heard about this story. And so they went, they went and running, you know, let me go, let me go, let me go get Abigail because this man finna come and tear this whole house down. And listen, I'm part of this household. Somebody got to do something. And then Abigail showed up. Ab Abigail showed up in a picture. And Abigail got word that David is getting ready to come. How do I respond? And you see her, you see her operate as a wise woman. You see her operate as a woman of God. You see her move and do things and, you know, turn some things around just to make sure that her household is operating and moving forward in a forward direction. And so in the midst of that, in the midst of that, Ab Abigail was able to intercede. She was able to intercede for her household, save her household. And she gave David what he was asking for. <laughs> she went ahead and just gave David what he was asking for. And so I should have to say, David have been out there in the wilderness streets. He was out there dealing with some hard stuff. He was dealing with all different type of emotions. And my question to God was, why so much, God? Why, why this man had to do so? Why he had to do so much? Why he had to go through so much? And God was trying to perfect this man because he knew, he knew as king, he was going to come up against some things. Though David made a lot of mistakes. Okay, no, sorry. I, I said that part already. All right. Let's go. Let's go down to uh, David was a man out of God's own heart and that he was committed to God's ways and demonstrated God's law. If we define the word character, right? If we define the word character, Character refers to the person's moral and ethical qualities. It consists of beliefs and moral principles that can, excuse me, guide their behavior in discrete ways. Personality, personality is the sum of a person's physical, psychological, emotional, and social, social aspects that are manifested through behavior and actions. And throughout scripture, throughout scripture, we see David's struggles. We see David's sin and we see David's repentance. David was under a lot of pressure. <laughs> David had to endure some hard stuff. The man had to dodge, dodge darts that was thrown at him from a man that he admired and looked up to. He had to dodge his, you know, he was on a run from his life from a man who was considered to be his father-in-law. And yet he still, he still walked in integrity. Yet he still honored this person. Yet he still followed the statues of the Lord. There are a lot of people, and I'm saying people just in general. There are a lot of people that's mad with God and they have not been honest with him about it. 
there, there, there are a lot of people that, that that's bit mad with God. They, they got a big attitude. They frustrated. They try and figure out, God, what's going on in my life? Why you ain't making no moves yet? Why nothing ain't changing? Why it's like I'm in this stuck position? Why it's like I'm in this stuck place? Why nothing hasn't happened yet? Why it's like I'm going in circles? God, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Lord, I feel like quitting and giving up. God, I don't, I don't really, I don't really know if I even want to do this God thing no more because... I don't really like what my life is right now. I, I don't really like what's happening with me right now. I don't really, really like what I'm showing up to on a regular basis. And they haven't been they haven't been honest with God about these things. They they're they're feeling these things. They 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 have these different deep, different emotions that's 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 frustrating them on the inside, but they have not been honest with God because they feel like, well, technically, this is God we're talking about. Like I don't really know if I, you know, can say those kind of things to God and, you know, he don't strike me down or nothing like that. I don't really know if I can be that honest and upfront with God or I never tried to do that. I speak to so many wives who have never even felt like they was they, 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 they could do that. Like they could get in a position where they can actually be honest with God and really let them know like, God, this is messed up today. <laughs> like I, I, I ain't really feeling this today, right? We know, we know as Christians, we cannot do anything successful without God. So because we know that, because we know that, why not, why not share with him about how you really feel? And I feel like so many wives, I feel like so many wives on this journey, in this type of assignment, they get in trouble with this and, and, and they get in trouble with this because it leads to other actions that take place because they have not been honest with God in the first place. All right. In several um, books of the Psalms, we see David expressing to God his negative and his positives. We see David talking to God on the regular. We see David crying out to God. We see David praying to God. We see in David, you know, asking God hard questions. We see David struggles in his frustration we see david emotions like come to life we see these things happening we see his praises we see his defeat but david talked to god D david talked to god and in response god seen david as faithful god seen david as a man after his own heart thursday morning thursday morning i had woke up to God sharing these words with me. And what he said is, I don't necessarily reward bad behavior, but I do honor faith. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily reward bad behavior, but I do honor faith. Wise. One of the biggest reasons why it's so important for you to be transparent, honest, and open with God about how you really feeling is because when you have all that stuff stuffed in and when you're dealing with all that stuff internally and you don't have no type of outlet or you have not released that in some type of way and not just, oh, well, I talked to my friend or I talked to a family member or I talked to my therapist or I talked to, you know, my counselor or I talked to my pastor. Sometimes you need to talk these things out to God. And a lot of times, a lot of times as Christians, you are trying to walk this perfect line. You're, you're, you're trying to walk this this straight line you're trying to do everything in accordance to the book and not mess up and it's almost like if i mess this up god i'm a horrible person if if i don't do this right i'm 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 i'm, I'm a horrible person but what end up happening what end up happening is you can have that type of weight of those negative emotions, though, those frustrations, just seeming like, you know, just life is beating you down. You can be carrying that kind of weight and it leads to other behavior. You end up lashing out and acting out and responding and responding in a way that you probably wouldn't necessarily respond it if you would have been upfront and honest with God. Or if you would have responded that way, you could have got a different type of response from God. I am one of those coaches who 
always come on ahead. I'm going to be transparent with y'all 1,000%. 1,000%. Cuz I don't want no person that I coach that comes on my 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 platform, my channels and watch me and think that coach T has it all together. I am the first to tell my truth. <laughs> I, I am the first to tell you, mm -mm, Coach T missed it today. <laughs> I, I'm the first to tell you, Mr. C got on Coach T's nerves and baby, mm -mm, it ain't good right now. I, I, I would be the first to do that because I was that one when I was walking through my stuff, right? I, I was that one who, who was looking at, you know, you know, Christian people, right? I was that one who was like, this don't seem real. Like this, 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 this seem fake. This, this don't seem authentic. And one of the things I used to always say was people need realness. Pe people need real, you know? I remember at this job I was working at, it was this one lady and she would like, you know, host like Bible studies there. She would host Bible studies there at the, at the job. And it was this young girl that, you know, she was young. You know, she was young. She had a, you know, she had had a baby out of wedlock. And, you know, she was, she knows, but she, at the same time, she recognized that she was, you know, not in a so good place. And she was trying to get her life together. Like, it's like, she was saying things like, you know, I want to honor God. I want to honor Jesus. I want to live that lifestyle. But yet still, I'm still young. So that means I still want to, you know, have fun. I still want to party. I still want to do things. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I want to do things right with God too. And so I didn't go to the Bible studies. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't go to it um, because I don't. I don't take counsel from everybody. I'm real, real mindful of what I allow my ears to listen to and what I allow my ears to, you know, to settle in. But I overheard the conversation like after the Bible study was over, and she was talking about that. And you know, they asked what well, Tanika. What do you think? You probably should ask Tanika. <laughs> Because my response is not going to be the response that you're probably looking for. My my response is not going to be like the average, oh, we should just do this. No, I ain't going to respond like that. I'm going to respond from a real place. I, I'm, I'm going to respond from a transparent place. And so when they asked me, I said, well, who cares? <laughs> I was fired not long after that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, God knows this young lady's hard. God knows what this girl got going on. She don't need no one necessarily judging her or pushing her in a sense. And it's a it's it's more than one way to disciple somebody, you know, to walk, you know, to walk the, the ways of the Lord. It's, it's it's more than one ways. And I just can't stand when people just feel like they gotta like, oh, you gotta do it like this, you gotta do it like this. No, you don't. <laughs> No, you don't. If that person, I have a person right now that I work with in the lab. I mean, she cuss and fuss and she said all kinds of things and say all kinds of words. And I sit there with her and listen to her. But when she coming and she see me, she's like, oh, Miss Tanika in here with her Bible. Oh, Miss Tanika in here listen to her worship music. Oh, she still respect me and honor me as a Christian woman. And then when she have questions and she want to ask, I will share with her. But people got to stop this, okay? So people got to stop this. Um, And so I say that to say... I am not the one to come on here and sugarcoat nothing. I ain't going to be so super deep with you and be like, oh, trying to make it, you know, more than what it is. Let me tell you this, okay? Me and David could be in sister and brother. <laughs> me and Peter, we are definitely related, all right? Uh, because we are human. <laughs> we, we, we are human. Otherwise, if we, if we didn't have those type of emotions, if we didn't have those types of things, we would be robots, right? We, we are human. And I have learned, I have learned just from my journey of separation to reconcile, to being back with my husband, I have learned really what grace means. I, I really know and understand now what grace is and how grace abides. Grace is not there for you to like, oh, I can just do this and I can just do that. I can do that. No, grace is for those days like, uh-oh, <laughs> I don't went too far this time. <laughs> uh-oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh-oh, God done told me, no, don't do this. And I did it anyways. Like, I understand the importance of grace. And so, I love David's story. I love David's story because he was a man that was just straight up. 
He was a true, true, straight up type of guy. And I feel like he had the heart of God because God judged his heart and God knew his heart. God know the realness of who he really was in spite of the things that he was going through, in spite of the different, you know, trials that he was, you know, he, he had to endure. God knew that. And so I absolutely love, I absolutely love the book of Psalms. And ever since my birthday in April, I've really been meditating on this one Psalms in the Bible, Psalms 43. Because I turned 43, so that's why I like that Psalms. Um, but I had been meditating on this Psalm. Um, and I had been re I had read it before or whatever, but it really, really stood out to me. It had been stood out to me um, this past year. And it only had five verses, but each one, each one is so powerful and so profound, right? And so Psalms 43 reads, this is the New King James Version. It says, Vindicate me, O Lord. That's my favorite part. <laughs> vindicate me oh lord and plead my cause against an ungodly nation oh deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man for you are the god of my strength why do you cast me off why do i go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy oh send out your light and your truth let them lead me let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. And when I go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy, and on the harp, I will praise you, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hoping God, for I should yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Vindicate me, O Lord vindicate me oh lord y'all know i share with y'all all the time i was persecuted for being a wife <laughs> i was persecuted for being a wife um i was persecuted for being a wife i was persecuted for loving my husband i was persecuted for showing up for my husband i was persecuted for being a christian woman who believed in her marital vows. I was persecuted for standing and staying in a marriage that did not benefit me. I wasn't getting anything out of it. I was persecuted by family. I was persecuted by friends. I was persecuted by the church. <laughs> I was persecuted as a wife. And one of the things I used to always share and, and just really cry out to God was, Lord, vindicate me. Vindicate me, God. Because I need your help on this journey. I, I, I need your help. I sound like a broken record. People think I'm crazy. I'm saying the same stuff over and over again. And they're looking at me like, where is your God? <laughs> if your God is, is, is so faithful and, it, and if you are trusting in your God so much, then why he ain't showed up for you yet? If, if, if your God is telling you all these things and you getting all these revelations and, 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 and God is, is saying this and saying that, where he at? <laughs> why, he, why he ain't showed up yet? Why, why he ain't came to fix this situation yet? Why your husband still acting crazy? Why your husband ain't came home yet? Why things are you still looking dark? Why it looks like you worse off <laughs> than you were before? Why nothing ain't changed in your life yet? Why your situation like it's getting worse? Why ain't no movement taking place? Huh? And I used to be like, Lord, half of what these people saying is coming out to be true. Why you ain't come through yet? Why you ain't helping me? Why you ain't doing something about this situation? Indicate me, oh Lord. Vindicate me against these people. Come to my rescue. Because right now, it's looking like that girl lost her mind. Oh, well, well, if your if your God is so faithful and, and your God is telling you all these things, then what you what you bring it to my attention for? He's gonna do it. He, he's gonna do it. If if your God, then wait for him to do it. Why, why you what you bothering me about it for? Why, why, why you mention it to me? If, if your God is going to do all these things, then let's just wait for your God to do it. Vindicate me, O oh Lord, has been three simple words that I have prayed on a regular. On, on a regular. 
And when I feel like different ones are coming against me, especially against, you know, something that I know God has told me, I go right back to those three words. Lord, vindicate me. Vindicate me, oh Lord. Vindicate me. Vindicate me, oh Lord. God, show up to my rescue. Because if you don't show up, these people are going to think that I'm crazy. If you don't show up, I'm going to look like I'm just this, oh, this is, there she go, this old crazy Christian woman with all that unbelievable faith and stuff. And she got all this faith and, and yet it's still, her life is still the same and, and things for her is still the same and nothing ain't changing. Vindicate me, oh Lord. Vindicate me, oh Lord. Life can sometimes wear the greatest person out. Like you, you can be doing everything right. You, you can be doing all the things. You can be, you can check out everything on the list, and life will still throw you a curveball. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I did that. I did this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. What's the problem? Why nothing ain't happening then? I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I did this. I did this. You can show up again and again, and still feel like you haven't gotten anywhere. You can, you can be like, I feel like I'm in the same place that I was just in. And I thought that, vindicate me, oh Lord. Vindicate me. Sometimes it can seem like you are walking in circles. It feels like this stuff not working. <laughs> this, this, this gossip ain't working. This, this faith ain't getting for me. This, this, this ain't working. And sometimes you even start to believe and wonder, like, God, do you hear me? Are, are, you, are you listening? Do you not see what's taking place? Do you, do you not know what's going on right now? This feeling can sometimes increase, especially when you feel like the ways of life are trying to come for you. Especially when you feel like it's like one thing after another, after another, after another. Or if, if not that, is God seemed like he delivered you in this area. But then now it's like he's taking you back through this again. It's like, wait, because <laughs> we was going like, <laughs> why, why, we, why are you taking me back if we, if we had already overcame that? Why, why are we going backwards now? Why, why it seem like we're going backwards? Just to get to that place, go backwards, God bring you out of it again, and then he takes you through it again. You like, wait, wait, no. <laughs> Sir, I got, I got it. I, I got it. <laughs> like, I got it. Why are we still doing this again? Like, why, why are we doing this twice? I love what the Bible talks about in 1 John 5, 15, when it says, if we know that he hears us, then whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we ask of him. I've shared with you guys that my mentor, coach, intercessor person that used to pray for me on a regular and when it came down to my marriage um one thing that that lady can do is pray <laughs> like she can pray and when she pray you see things happening right you 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 see like the move of god on this and it didn't mean that she was a perfect person and she did everything right in her own life but that was a gift and that was an area that God anointed her in, right? And I remember times when she would tell me, you know, it's getting close to my time where, you know, I'm not going to necessarily be walking with you like, you know, like we like we have. And it had been times where I know that God had told me, like, it's time for us, to, you know, to pull back and separate. And I remember God telling me one day, he said, the reason why you don't want to release this person is because you think that I'm not gonna hear your prayers like I heard her prayers for you. So you don't want to you you hold it on to her when your season with her is coming to an end, but you're holding on to her because it seems like when she prays, things happen. And when you pray, it don't necessarily happen as quickly and as fast as it happened when she does it. <laughs> and so you're holding on to this person. Right? You, you, you're you holding on to that. And sometimes God is like, I need you to trust me in this area and to believe that the same way I heard her prayers for you, I hear your prayers too. I hear your prayers too. 
wife God hears your prayers. He he hears your he hears your prayers and he know what he was what's going on. He's listening. He sees. He's watching. He's taking notes. God is very 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 aware of what's going on in your situation. Now, sometimes sometimes it's hard to see something new in an old place and especially a place you have you have already endured for such a long time. And that was one of my biggest struggles because it seemed like, like, I, when is this going to change? Because <laughs> right now I feel like I'm drowning in this. It feels like I am going to be this way forever. And then the environment and the people around you sometimes doesn't necessarily make it better or easier because you see their life and their life is not necessarily always like you have so many people like, oh, well, you know, people around me, they're, they're advancing, they're going up and they, you know, this and that, whatever. But sometimes you can be around an environment around certain people where it's like nothing is changing with them. Am I going to be like them? <laughs> like nothing is nothing is happening with them. Is this the life that 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 I have to accept now? Right. And so sometimes when you are in a, a a place that you've been in for a long time, it's hard for you to see anything new. It's, it's, it's hard for you to, to, to see anything new. But I wanted to remind you today, just like David, just like Joseph, just like Abraham, all, the, these men, God took them through all kinds of hell, took them through all kinds of stuff. And he had a promise for them waiting after they endured a season. He, he, had a, he had a promise for them on the other side after they endured their season. Why, there are just some seasons you will have to endure because it has been a sign to you. It has been a sign to you. And sometimes you will have to endure those seasons for an appointed time. Now, that's the one thing about God. When he said, you know what, I'm going to put this, I'm making this investment in you. And, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And I promise it's going to be this and that and that. But I ain't going to give you the details. You're going to have to just trust and believe me that what I'm telling you is going to happen. It's going to happen. And so there are seasons and times when you, when, when, you, when you experience miracles. There are seasons and times when, you know, you have the warfare. There are seasons and times when you are praying and fasting. But then there are seasons and times when you are having to endure. David was a man who endured. David was a man who went through his assignment. So then you ask the question, well, Koshi, why are seasons of endurance so important? Why, why is endurance so important? I was in a lab today. Y'all can't see my tattoo. Can y'all see it? And I was drawing this person's blood. And the man asked, he said, what does your uh, tattoo mean? He said, what does, what, what, what's the meaning behind your tattoo? And I had to think about it for a minute. I look, because I look, I'm like, dang, sometimes I forget that, that tattoo is even there. I said, oh, I said, this tattoo is representative of love endures all things. It comes from the book of 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And it said, you know, these things are happening, these things are happening, these things, but, but love tops them all. I said, so I said, it's a representative that love endures all things. He's like, oh, okay, okay. That's that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. I'm like, come on, Coach T, still being dope after all these years because this tattoo is old. <laughs> love endures all things. Why, there are seasons where you are going to have to just endure because that has been assigned to you. Season of endurance teaches you how to stay in the rain and fight. Seasons of endurance teaches you how to fight. It teaches you how to keep your weight up. It teaches you how to bounce back. It teaches you how to continue to show up. It teaches you how to trust and believe God. It teaches you how to lean on God. It equips you for the necessary training that you need for your next. Because we don't know what the next will be. N none of us are, are, are sure of what is actually coming next. There's sometimes you can get excited about your next. And sometimes you can, you know, oh, I'm looking forward to this and that. I'm looking forward to this. But we don't necessarily know what our next is. And so that's why we are taught that in whatever season that you are in, in, in whatever season that you're in, you need to embrace it. 
You need to embrace it because each season of life is teaching and training you for something. First, that's a lot of that's a lot. I might say that right. 518 says, be thankful in everything and in all circumstances. Be be thankful in everything, in, in all circumstances. This is where your gratitude comes into play. This is when you got to really, really put that, that, that gratitude list together. Like you can have all these complaints and all these things and all this, you know, this and that and the other. But at the same time, you need to make sure that they, that's, that's, that's lining up with what you're thankful for. Mr. Seaton came home, y'all. <laughs> at the same time, you need, to, you need to line those things up with what you are thankful for, right? David was the king of Israel for 40 years. He was the king of Israel for 40 years. There's no way, there's no way he would have been able to maintain that position for so long without the things that he went to prior. There's no way he would have been able to be, uh, would have been able to sustain that role, that title, that seat as king if he had not did and went through the things that he went through. Wife, God is going to king you in this season. Your present sufferings cannot be compared to the future glory that awaits you. That's Romans 8, 18. And I, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. That day by day by day by day routine thing, that stuff is tough. That stuff, that's, that stuff is overwhelming sometimes, okay? Especially on those dry days. Especially in those dry moments, especially when there ain't nothing happening, no movement, especially when no excitement, and nothing is taking place. All right. But you have to pray for God to give you vision in those times of drought. Because without vision and if you if without vision and you're not working towards something, it's easy to get swallowed up by the day by day things of life. You have to wake up each and every morning with the attitude of I'm one day closer to what God is leading me to be. Vindication is your portion because you are the daughter of the king. And because you are the daughter of the king, he is going to king you in this season. Your temporary circumstances, your temporary troubles, your, your temporary things that you're going through, it's temporarily. Everything has a ending date. And when you start to drift off and your and your focus start to to get entangled with all the different circumstances and all the different stuff that you're going through you have to learn to talk to god david talked to god david was very very transparent with god david was very honest with god and you will have to learn how to express yourself and ask god the hard questions god what does this mean why, why did you allow this to happen? Is there something I should be doing about that? Is this you, God? Or is this me? Or is this the enemy? God, why do I feel like this is all this, this situation is, is about to, to, to go in a different direction? God, is it something that I'm not seeing? Is it something that you need to be showing me? Is it something I'm not doing? These are just a few questions. These are just a few questions that I walk my wife clients through and help them to navigate through this journey. You have to learn how to be transparent and open with God when hard stuff comes up. And the reason why it's so important for you to do this is because God already knows. He already knows. He understands. <laughs> and he's waiting for you to share your heart with him. God said, I'm about to king you in this season. Come to me with your troubles. Come to me with your concerns. Come to me with your problems. Come to me with the things that, that, that weigh on you. Come to me with, with, with those concerns. David was successful like he was because he talked to God. David was successful like he was because he was dependent on God. David was successful like he was because when it was all said and done over, the very thing that God had anointed him to do, God Show him why it was necessary for you to go through those seasons prior. God is saying, I am getting ready to king you, wife, in this season. 
Don't let your temporary troubles, your temporary problems, your temporary things hinder you from what God wants to do next. This is your season. This is your hour for you to start doing your own personal work. And so I want to encourage you, wife. I want to encourage you. If you are in a season and if you are ready to start working on you, if you are in a place where you're saying, you know what? I don't really know how to be transparent. I have a lot of people who sometimes say they don't even know how to cry. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't know how to sit down and take a cry day out. And that's not good because you're stuffing all that stuff in. It's like if you don't release that stuff, it's going to come out another way. If you don't get rid of that stuff, it's, it's going to come out another way. This is your time. This is your season, especially in this September self-care month. Do something different about your situation. God is in the business of kinging his daughters. This is your time to time and do your work. You can do that at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen, I've shared if you on my email list that I have taken $50 off, $50 off for my first time wife uh consultations if you are in a place where you're saying you know what let me just get some information let me just kind of see where i'm at on my journey let me just let somebody hear me out let me just you know see what what it is you can you know you can share with me this is the time for you to take advantage of the consultation this is the time for you to take advantage of just like let me let me let me see what it is because i probably couldn't pay the, the regular price back then but now i i can i can i can i can Take those $50 off. This is the time, wife, and this is the season for you to start doing the necessary work that is required for you on this journey. Don't let your marital grief, don't, don't let your marital injury, don't let those temporary things hinder you from getting to where God is trying to get you. Endure your, your, your season as a good soldier. Endure what it is that God is taking you through. For it's for a reason. Nothing just happens. Everything that God is doing and allowing is either doing one of two things. It's either training you, it's refining you, it's developing you, it's growing you up, it's maturing you, it is bringing out the best character in you. This is the time to do your work, all right? www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com In the meantime, in the meantime, listen... It's Friday. It's the weekend. It's the last day. What y'all got planned for this weekend? Make sure that you're doing something for yourself. Make sure that you are enjoying yourself. Listen, and I'll talk to y'all on the other side. All right? Love you. Blessings.